With the Oscar ceremony happening this Sunday, one Sundance smash is already targeting the award ceremony for next year. Fox Searchlight has dated Nate Parker's Birth of a Nation in a prime award spot October 7, 2016. The movie written, directed, produced, and starring Parker had a record-breaking sale at this past year's Sundance Film Festival for a whopping $17.5 million. Birth of a Nation tells the true story of slave Nat Turner, a literate slave and preacher who was used to calm other slaves in neighboring plantations down via his sermons and who subsequently led a bloody uprising that had reverberations throughout the county mm, country mark what do you think of birth of a nation getting an october release date i think it makes a lot of sense because this movie could make a lot of noise come oscar time next year this week next year we could be talking about nate parker for a variety of awards look i've been high on this guy ever since i checked him out in arbitrage a few years ago he's a guy that needed to get more work we always said where's nate parker where's they park. Look at what he's done now. This movie's already making Oscar buzz. We haven't even gotten to this award ceremony yet. It's the perfect release date for this. You can build up Oscar buzz. October is really where you start kicking award season into high gear. And everything I've heard about this movie, I wasn't able to go to Sundance like some other people here at the panel. So I don't know what the movie is. I don't know if it's great or not. I heard a lot of buzz coming out of it, Christian. It sounds like this dude, not only in front of, but behind the camera, is going to be a force for a while. Listen, yeah, I got to go to Sundance, but I didn't get to see the movie, but I did get to speak to him. And to hear this guy's passion for this movie and to hear his co-stars and to people to talk about what he brought to this movie, there's a reason why that 17 million, why that happened. There's a reason why I got all that buzz and that it was the darling of the festival. Um, I think that the October release date is perfect because it's going to be such a powerful film, obviously. And the, it, to hit right in October, to get the talk going in October, to start the Oscar buzz, because it's already got buzz. It is already, it, it, it's, it's almost March and it's already got buzz. People are talking about it. And this, when a story like this comes, oh, the movie that all everyone was talking about at Sundance now has that October release date and it's a story on all the sites and everybody's talking about it. We're covering it here. It makes a lot of sense to put it there because I think that this is so far, I mean, going to be a front runner to win Best Picture. I mean, I haven't seen the damn thing. I mean, the whole reason that they went with Fox Searchlight for it's they actually took less money than because right. Netflix offered, I think, around 20 million. Yeah, 20 or 21, right? Yeah, and they took 17.5 because they wanted to position this as an Oscar contender. And they saw what happened with Beasts of No Nation with Netflix, where even though that was released in theaters, it got no, like very little uh, awards consideration. I think there was a stigma attached to it because it was date in date which means online and in the theater i think this is where they want to position themselves yeah i haven't seen the movie either hearing a lot of good buzz about it also you know it, it's if people don't know that the name of the movie is taken from a controversial and very Propaganda, influential yeah. film uh 1915 dw griffith film called the birth of a nation which you know actually kind of had some racist stuff in it, it had very like the, very racist yeah, yeah ku klux klan is like the heroes uh, of the movie but at the same time it was influential because it had um at, at, you know right now we think of these things as very you know standard stuff but they use story techniques in terms of just cutting from wide shots to close-ups right. and telling a story because back then most of the movies back then were just literally like people standing around doing nothing in big wide shots and then that was a movie that was able to put it all together and I think he wanted to co-op that name and make it a positive thing. That's exactly right and I asked him about that actually and that's exactly why he did that and I think that once we once we get more of this movie once we get to the October and more, there's more interviews with him you're going to hear more about that story but I think what it also does because I'm with Mark I've been talking about this guy I think this guy should be John Stewart as, as Green Lantern mm -hmm. um, and I think that he's just a guy that will be in the bigger movies also so, and I think what I love about what he's done is because he is such a talented actor, but he's not getting big roles. He wasn't getting a lot of stuff. So he goes out there now, and now this is how he's going to say, look, I'm here. Not only am I a, a great actor, look what I just did as far as my directing goes. So I think this is going to make him put him into that mainstream kind of superstar stuff. Because I remember when we were bringing him in, and I'm like, Nate Parker's coming in. Everyone's like, well, who's Nate Parker? And I'm like, no one's going to say that. Next year, no one will say <laughs> See Arbitrage, bro. It's yeah. great. Uh, seriously, Arbitrage. And even in that, in, in, I didn't love Nonstop, but he's in Nonstop. He's in it. Oh, him yeah. and Scoob McNary yeah. are in it. Um, yeah. I liked him Beyond the Lights. and Beyond the Lights, yeah. I mean, it's funny because I saw Beyond the Lights the first time and I thought it was okay. And then I watched it again and I and I wound up appreciating it more. But he's, he's actually... Great, and, and he invested some of his own money into oh, this sure. movie, right? Yeah, absolutely, and, and the investment's paying off. Yeah. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.